Many gardens are in full bloom this time of year. But there's a place in Bloomington that seems to be budding year round in this week's Finding Minnesota. John Lordson takes us on a historical tour of the Japanese garden at Normandale Community College. I was just astounded to find this behind this college. Hidden behind the brick buildings that make up Normandale is something you typically find an ocean away. It's like discovering a, a little treasure box where you don't expect it. This is amazing. It's a two acre oasis of serenity that got its start 50 years ago. Back then, one thing led to another at a Bloomington JCs meeting, trying to figure out what to put behind the new college. A JC member decided to contact a famous Japanese architect. They had become good friends with Takao Watanabe, um, who uh, was a landscape architect for the city of Tokyo. Watanabe liked the idea so much, he essentially volunteered his time. He flew from Tokyo to Bloomington to hand draw plans for the garden, but it didn't come without challenges. A Japanese garden is like a landscape painting done with live plants. The problem is many of the plants that grow in Asia can't survive our Minnesota winters. So instead, Watanabe grew spruce and pines, willows and crab apples. Normandale even created a new kind of cherry tree that could outlast the frozen tundra. So in a sense, Normandale helped invent a Japanese cherry tree. We did, we did, and it is very much our cherry tree. It's also their Bitendo, which is a smaller replica of a Shinto shrine. So in Japan, the Bitendos Large Much larger. It's the size of a, of a huge church. Next to the shrine, visitors will find a carp stone at the bottom of a waterfall. That's fitting because the entire garden is swimming with koi fish. In Japan, they're considered good luck because of their beauty and longevity. Here goes a big one. They became colorful and became much more valuable uh, for their color as, as really as works of art. They usually live uh, at least 30 years, sometimes 50. Wow. Uh, there are records of koi living to be 100. From the Zigzag Bridge to Turtle Island, each attraction is connected to a Japanese fable, which helps draw visitors from near and far. It's very therapeutic, you know, just walking around, it's very calming. You don't hear much traffic. It's just, it feels like you're actually in a Japanese garden. Abby Goyle and Julia Laff are here from New York City. I think it's a must see. It's gorgeous, especially on such a nice day like today. I don't think Manhattan has anything quite this extensive. Central Park, but it's not quite a Japanese garden. As you might imagine, pruning is a full-time job, but worth it. Because here, it's possible to escape to another part of the world without ever leaving the big city. To feel a sense of peace and tranquility, um, that is the objective of the design. In Bloomington, John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. And since the pandemic, the garden has seen its visitors grow up to 40,000 guests a year. The Japanese garden is free and open to the public 365 days a year. For more information, you can just visit WCCO.com links.